Hello everyone and welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today we're going to be talking about civilizations in the Lost Kingdom. Which one should you be using for whatever your particular role is? What you should be doing to effectively use what you have to bring to bear on the battlefield, whether it's a support role, a frontline role, a rallier, a leader, a coordinator, any of those different pieces of the puzzle that make a successful KBK campaign. Which civilization should you be and why? We're going to go through each one. I'm going to give you, yes, this is a good one. No, this is not. If it is a good one, why is it a good one? If it's not, why isn't it? We're just going to go one by one all the way through. So that way you can pick which one you want to do best. Just as a reminder, this is also a sponsored content creation channel for Rise of Kingdoms. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can get all these sweet videos on helping you be the best you can be inside of this game. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Rome is the first one on the left. We're going to just going to work our way to the right. Um, again, I think that we'll go through what's the best for each role, and then we'll just keep on moving along. So Rome, again, Rome, no real special perks from a specialized role standpoint. It is one of the best infantry civilizations in the game. And if you are going to be primarily focusing on open field infantry-based fighting, uh, this is one of the best that you can go for in KVK. I wouldn't put it as one of my top three. I do have a top three civilizations that I'm going to go over at the very end. But with Rome, this is going to give you one of the best infantry units on the map. It's going to give you the extra tankiness that you need to survive longer. It's going to give you march speed, which in any fighting situation is a fantastic thing to have. Uh, and then finally some gathering speed, which is not really that big of a deal. But the two main things that you're taking into account are the special unit of Legionary. That's going to give you the extra defense for the unit that you have, plus an additional defense bonus for infantry for the Rome civilization itself, which again makes this one of the best infantry uh, civilizations to use in any battling situation, specifically in KBK, where it can be prolonged to the point where it's days and days and days of fighting. This will all stack up to be very helpful for you in battle. So I would recommend Rome if you are an inf infantry civilization, specifically made for open field fighting, and that's it. You're not rallying. You're not doing any kind of flag building. You're not, I mean, you're not doing any of the extra stuff. You're just there to fight. Rome is a, a good one to have. I'll also caveat that with France whenever we get to it because there's a, a special perk there that will help you in that same role and then you can choose which way you want to go with it. The next one we're going to do is Germany. Germany, really you want to use Germany, in my opinion, um, if you're one of two things. Either you are a heavy, heavy cav-based army that is focused on defense, oddly enough. So with, with the knights that you get, the Teutonic knights, they're one of the heaviest defensive cavalry units in the game. Uh, you do get a 5% cav attack bonus as well, which is nice. And the action point recovery in KVK is substantial. You need those action points to gain honor points if you're able to spend some time killing barbarians and doing the forts during the past glory event, all those good things. Those action points do come in handy, um, so that is a nice little perk. The troop training speed with the Mightiest Governors throughout the Lost Kingdom, there's a Lost... Uh, I can't remember what it's called... Um, it's, the, it's basically the, the KBK MGE, so the one where it's for the whole kingdom. Um, you can use this to train a ton of troops. I think the threshold where it makes sense to switch to a troop training civilization, train your troops, and then go back is around 750,000 T5. So if you're going to be doing that, it makes sense to go ahead and do the switch to Germany or to Britain and then back to your normal civilization if that's the only reason you're using Germany uh, is for that purpose. So Germany is also a really good civilization for those perks. Again, a lot of little minor perks. I don't recommend Germany as a main civilization in the Lost Kingdom, even if you are a primary cav civilization or a primary cav player. Uh, there's just better ones out there, and we will get to those, and I'll tell you why. But uh, Germany has very specific reasons why you would want to use it, but not really, in my opinion, one of the better ones. Britain is very much in the same boat. They have the troop training capability. Increasing your ally garrison capacity by 20% is interesting, but to be honest, you shouldn't be garrisoning cities in KVK. There's, so, there's such a high hospital capacity in KVK after the past glory event is over for your kingdom that 
you don't need the garrison. The, you're going to kill your own troops for no reason because you're going to fill your hospital um, with the person who's actually receiving the uh, the rally, whereas you are taking dead. It's like you're you're manning a pass or you're manning a flag. You're going to take half dead. So there's really no reason for you to garrison cities in the Lost Kingdom because you're just wasting your troops. So that's kind of a wasted perk for Lost Kingdom. And then the Archer Attack and the Longbowmen are nice. And if you are a heavy Archer Civilization, again, there is a thought behind that where that kind of does make a little bit of sense. However, again, I think there is a better civilization for you nukers out there and skill damage players um, instead of going for a specific troop style of attack, defense, health, and a specialized unit for your troop. Uh, it's always helpful, but um, there's better. There's better out there, and we're going to get to it. So, again, Britain wouldn't recommend KB in KBK. There's just not enough going for it. But, again, this is one of those ones you can switch to if you're going to be doing massive training um, during the MGEs or during any of the other events inside of KBK where you can get points. Uh, if it's a large chunk, go Britain, train your troops, come back to your main civilization. Then we come to France. France is interesting. It's one of those civilizations outside of KBK that's kind of lackluster. Um, it, it's average. It's got a it's got a specialized unit in the throwing axemen, which are nice. They're the highest health uh, unit in the game from an infantry standpoint. But the at the the general three percent troop health bonus is is okay, but not great. Um, wood gathering speed is not really anything to speak of. The increased hospital healing speed, again, outside of KBK, not really that big of a deal. Even in Ark of Osiris, most players in the top tier, Osiris League, that kind of thing, they're not healing um, their troops because they have enough to just burn through enough for the one-hour match. So outside of KBK, France is not really that great. However, in KBK, this is one of my top three picks. And the reason I say that, you are going to be fighting for days at a time. It's non-stop. You're going to be open field fighting, rallying. You're going to be doing everything inside of the Lost Kingdom that generates by fighting. That 20% healing speed bonus is fantastic. It is an absolutely fantastic perk to have. If, it, if this civilization had nothing else, even though the troop health thing is nice, I would still say this is a top three civilization for KVK. That 20% healing speed will save you so many speed ups. And speed ups, especially healing speed ups, are at a premium inside of KBK, especially if you are a frontline fighter. If you are a frontline fighter and you're going to be doing the large chunk or a large chunk of your kingdom's fighting or your alliance's fighting inside the Lost Kingdom, France is actually one of the better ones to pick because this will allow you to fight for longer because you're not going to be running out of speed ups anytime soon. Of course, you can mash the purchase button and get a bunch of speed ups, but not all of us have that capability. So this particular civilization will enable you to be effective longer because it allows you to fight longer because you can use more speed ups, um, well, less speed ups during, for the same amount of, of uh, troops being healed. So this is one of my top three picks. I would say France is definitely up there. And this is for any um, any troop combination. You can you can be a cav civ. You can be an archer civilization guy, or you can be an infantry guy, and this still works just fine. Spain, some interesting things. Highest attack for any cavalry special unit in the game. Cav defense for a perk as well. Experience gained from barbarians and other neutral units. Resource production increased by 20%. Spain is actually a fantastic um, civilization to use inside of KVK along with outside of KVK. But for the specific role of a growth account or an account that is powered up but needs help getting the commanders to support it. So, for instance, if you're a 40 million or 50 million player, you roughly are going to have, if you've been training the right way, anywhere between 2 to 3 million troops, roughly. Um, and that, that's going to be a variation depending on how, how much closer you are to 50 million rather than 40 million as to how many of those are T5. But... That being said, you may be in a position where you've got enough troops to be effective on the field, but your commanders might be under-leveled or un, you, know, you don't have enough high-level, 60-level commanders to be effective with those troops. Spain helps you with that because there is a massive opportunity inside of KVK to go ahead and level up those commanders using the high runs, using the camps, using the crusader fort, using the circles 
using the sanctuaries, using the ziggurats. Everything here has those guardians, and it's basically like having 15 different lost temples at your disposal to kill guardians twice a day. That stacks up quickly, and with Spain, it stacks up even more, giving you 10% extra experience to boot. And then on top of that, of course, resource production increasing by 20%. If you're in that growth fighter range or support fighter range where you are in that, I would even put you at 30 to 50 million power range, um, where you might not necessarily be the frontline guy, but you are going to be a, a heavy fighter, but also supporting role, and you still have some growth on your account that's really significantly needed, Spain is a very good option. It gives you very quality special unit with the Conquistador, and also gives you the resource production, which again, at that point in your travels gaining power, you should be anywhere between 23 and 25 level on all of your farming production facilities. So this is a great civilization. It's not my top three, but I'd put it as like an honorable mention as a, a civilization that you should think about using inside of the Lost Kingdom. China, I think, I you know, I was looking for some, some bonuses here. The 5% action point recovery is nice, but if you're going for action point recovery, um, you might as well go Germany. There's uh, more. <laughs> you get more for it. Troop defense by 3%. Again, pretty good, but nothing substantial. And then building speed, no help in KBK. I think China's probably one of the worst uh, civilizations to be inside of the Lost Kingdom if you're actually participating in fighting in general. There's just no bonuses here, in my opinion, that will help you better than any other civilization in the list so we're just going to keep on going japan does have some bonuses here really it's more for farming though once you get to the point where you should be bringing your farm accounts into lost kingdom once you have a little bit more space to play with hopefully you do um, you can bring a farm account in have japan and if you're active those nodes are very very juicy and that gathering speed does stack up very nicely whenever you have a level seven eight and nine node to go and send your gatherers to. So that's very helpful, but that's really the only thing I see beneficial here. I love the way the samurai look on the battlefield. However, in practice, the troop attack with the extra attack from the infantry, not exactly the best. Maybe that will change with Guan Yu, but again, I think my pick for skill damage bonuses uh, for any skill damage style player is going to be a different civilization than one that's based on attack. So Japan is what it is. I think I just went over that one, so let's move forward. Korea, same thing. Hospital capacity is nice, but you already have a pretty substantial hospital capacity while in the Lost Kingdom. Usually if you're maxed out, it's anywhere between 700 to 750 or 780 if you're higher level and VIP. So that's quite a bit. You can take a rally or two really um, with that kind of hospital capacity and not worry about dead troops if you have proper leveling and you're higher on the level list. If you're not, this may help a little bit, but again, I think Spain would be better for you if you're a 30 to 50 million player and you don't quite have all of your hospitals maxed out and things like that. The research speed, again, is a growth style thing. Archer defense, not really that great. The Horang special unit, again, okay, not great. Um, I think the best special archer unit in the game, in my opinion, is either going to be the Janissary with Ottoman or the... Um, or the Longbowman with Britain. So again, I think Korea is just kind of out uh, from a KBK perspective. Nothing here really kind of blowing my mind when it comes to benefits inside of KBK. Arabia. I, you know what? I want to skip Arabia. I want to come back to it uh, because there's a little bit of chatting I want to do about that. Ottoman. This is my top pick. And the reason being, it's great in KBK. It's great in Ark of Osiris. It's great in general and it works for so many different uh, types of players. So whether you are a top tier super whale or whether you are a 30 million player, um, most folks have some form of a, a nuking style army setup, uh, whether that's based on CAV, whether that's based on general commanders like Boudicca um, or Osman, things like that, which you see right in front of you, uh, or if you are based on archers or you know any of those skill damage style commanders, this benefits all of them because it's got a 5% active skill damage bonus, and that applies to all of your skill damage commanders. This is what I generally use when I'm fighting in any situation because I have five full armies that can perform massive nuking capability with the skill damage, and uh, it works really, really well. And in addition, it has that 5% troop march speed bonus while you're on the map. That combination of march speed and skill damage bonus 
makes Ottoman, in my opinion, the best civilization to be, or one of the best civilizations to be inside of the Lost Kingdom. That just gives you so much capability. That applies open field, that applies during a rally, that applies in defense, that applies to civilizations, or, or, or uh, that applies to different types of troops. So um, calves, again, archers, even infantry, this does apply. You know, you've got a Sun Tzu YSG army, you've got Sun Tzu Yulji, that skill damage boosts both of those commanders while using infantry. So why not take advantage of it? Um, I think that this is, again, pretty common sense when it comes to people who have played KVK before, but I wanted those of you that have not or have not really gotten to really engage deeply in it because you weren't leveled yet and now you are, Ottoman is one of the best civilizations to be in the game in KVK, hands down, bar none. Okay, so this is the one you want to go for if you have the, if you're going to be fighting, you don't necessarily need to be a frontline fighter, although this is the best for frontline fighters, in my opinion, just because of the amount of damage that you're going to put out and the mobility you get from the march speed. Um, but then also, the Janissaries are pretty nice. If you are an archer civilization, you're going to be nuking, so that skill damage is going to be helpful. You're going to be, depending on which commanders you're using, fairly slow. can be fast with you know Edward and El Cid, something like that. Uh, but for the most part, most archer co uh, combinations are fairly average as far as march speed goes, so that will help you with the march speed bonus. And again, the archer health and the janissary unit will help you be more tanky, which will help you uh, stay on the field longer, throwing out all that skill damage. So Ottoman is really, really good. Second to last, we've got Byzantium. Uh, again, nothing super crazy here. You've got that hospital capacity thing again. We just went over that. To me, not really beneficial in Lost Kingdom because you already get a really big one. Um, with the past glory event calf health with the cataphracts um, okay combo but again i think we just went over with ottoman you, you're going to get more damage from five percent damage on your nuke or your skill damage than you're going to get from a five percent um, even if this was attack you're going to get more from that than than from an attack a health or a defense bonus to one type of unit so i think that if you're a calf civilization you should be ottoman 100 percent of the time if you're an archer civilization you should be Ottoman 100% of the time. Um, that's just, to me, hands down, the easy choice to make. It just gives you way too much to, to pass up. Stone gathering speed, again, not really beneficial. And again, we talked about the hospital capacity. Not that great, not that beneficial. Let's go back to Arabia. Now, I'm still getting some clarification because I thought I knew, but then I was told by somebody I trust that I might be wrong. So let's go through Arabia really quick to finalize everything out here, and then I'll give you my top three picks and then uh, maybe the special mention. So uh, Arabia, increases cab attack by 5%. That's good. Again, we just talked about that. I think Ottoman is better for just raw damage for cavalry because of the skill damage bonuses. And that should kind of let you know where I'm headed with this. Uh, damage dealt to barbarians and other neutral units by 10% and damage dealt by rallies increased by 5%. So that's really good in KVK. You do a lot of PVE in KVK, whether it's farming barbs or doing forts, but just as, just as importantly, you're taking objectives that are held by barbarians. So you took the camps at the beginning, then you've got the crusader fort, then you've got the passes, then you've got the circles, the sanctuaries, the high rooms. you got to take all those things. Those are considered neutral units. Those are barbarian units. So that 10% bonus when you're sending that rally to take on those items are is effective. It's, it's helpful. That 10% does help. And that's quicker to take down that fort or that whatever. And then that helps you continue to move forward that much quicker. That's very beneficial in KVK. Speed is everything. You need speed in the Lost Kingdom to be able to execute your plans on the battlefield. And then finally, again, the additional 5% rallied army damage. It says damage dealt by rallied armies by 5%. I thought that meant all damage. So that, to me, includes normal attack, counterattack, skill damage, everything. That's what I thought. And I think that's probably the general consensus. However, the person that I've talked to has said that only applies to troop damage. So normal attack and counterattack damage. His point was that if they meant skill damage, it would, have, it would have said skill damage too. Because they specifically said on Ottoman, active skill damage. That also doesn't mean... Like, Ottoman does not improve Alex's nuke because it's not an active skill damage. It's a passive skill damage. So I'm, I've actually asked the developers to see if they can give me some clarity on this because this does make it a big difference. If it is all damage and you are a primary rallier during fighting, during taking passes, during taking all the objectives, 
Arabia may actually be better or equal to Ottoman. Because you're going to get 5% not only skill damage, but you're going to get 5% normal and counterattack damage added. And if you're attacking those objectives that I just talked about that have not been taken yet, additional 10% damage on top of all that too. Very, very helpful. And I think that ultimately, if you're going to be rallying cities and things like that, this will also help better than um, Ottoman because you're not only getting the 5% skill damage bonus, but you're also getting the 10% uh, I'm sorry, the 5% normal attack and counterattack damage boost as well. The thing that really intrigues me with Arabia, though, with Attila and Takeda out, and the prevalence of Constantine and Wu in garrisons, if you have a maxed Attila Takeda, using Arabia and being a primary rallier against anything, this may be the new meta or whatever if you have those two commanders maxed. I've seen reports on the battlefield with Attila and Takeda upwards of 30 to 40,000 damage per hit. That's the white damage. That's not skill damage since those two, those two commanders are not skill damage commanders. So with that being said, can you imagine a rally, which gets an additional 5%, and then on top of that, if it's fighting uh, an objective that hasn't been taken yet in the Lost Kingdom, an additional 10%, you're talking about roughly an extra 6K per tick. Uh, again, those ticks are every second. So again, this is going to stack up very, very nicely if you are the primary rallier and you have Attila and Takeda maxed out against any combination in the Lost Kingdom, whether it's PvE or PvP based. That's going to be a sick rally to see going up against pretty much anything. Um, I've seen Attila and Takeda absolutely wreck a Wu YSG combo, a Wu Saladin combo, which Saladin doesn't really help that much in that situation, but I've seen it. Um, there's Wu Richard, Wu, Wu Constantine, I've seen all those. That combination, even without Arabia, wrecks it. So if that in combination with Arabia is happening, it would be even worse for the defender. So I wanted to put that out there as well. That was kind of a special mention for me. I wanted to make sure that you guys uh, knew about that because of something I've, I've been thinking about. And I do, I do want to clarify the 5% damage dealt by rallied, rallied armies. I want to make sure that you know uh, exactly what you should be using and why and if it's not described correctly i want you to know so let me do my top three and then we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up so ottoman again i think is my number one just from the versatility of it all it can be used with any type of play style any level of um <clears throat> any level of governor that's using um skill damage can can benefit from this the mark speed is universal and again the skill damage can be used by any troop type uh, that's always helpful and if you're going to be fighting this is going to be one of the best ones I also think France is my number two pick, again, solely because of the hospital healing speed bonus, because of how much healing you're going to be doing in the Lost Kingdom, but then the extra benefits of really nice special units for infantry and an, a universal troop health bonus for all your troops of 3%. Remember, health bonuses basically increase the hit points of your uh, troops. So again, that just makes everything tankier. That's the way I would go. Uh, and then finally, I think, you know, I said Spain might not be my in my top three, but I actually think Spain's going to be my, my third one just for the versatility of it all. And the fact that the majority of the players playing this game are in that 25 to 50 million range, this is a quality civilization to have and one that will help you grow to be that frontline fighter eventually while inside the Lost Kingdom. Take advantage of the ex extra experience. Take advantage of the extra things that you can get from Spain. Uh, and grow your account even faster and get to that point where you are the one that's relied upon on the front lines to be taking objectives and pushing uh, other kingdoms out of your way, dominating the battlefield, conquering your kingdom, all that good stuff. So I think another honorable mention as well, Rome is one of the most awesome uh, infantry civilizations to watch on the battlefield just because of how tanky they are. But again, I think just from a versatility standpoint, we've got to go Ottoman, France, and then Spain as my top three, with Arabia getting another honorable mention as well um, because of the rally capabilities. And if you have Attila Takeda, that might actually be the way to go. Okay? Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the, um, the breakdown of all these civilizations for Lost Kingdom specifically. I know that most people are going into this for the first half of the kingdoms that are in it. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. 
Uh, and again, Merry Christmas to everybody. It's Christmas tomorrow for everybody in the States. I think most in Europe are about to start swinging into that right now. So I want to wish you all uh, in the, the out there a, a, a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. Warm wishes, all those good things from uh, from myself here at Dragothian Gaming and all that good stuff. So cheers. Have a good one. Take care. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you later.